Welcome back to the hangar and we're going to finish up our video on wheels and brakes. So what I've done is I left this brake caliper overnight and I hooked it up to the old rotor, secured the backing plate and I used a hydraulic pressure pot that I have made up pressurized to uh, 80 psi of pressure um, and uh, I've left the caliper pressurized overnight and we can see we've got a stain of hydraulic fluid. So we've definitely got a hydraulic leak in there. Now, what's interesting though, is that that hydraulic leak, I was afraid was coming from our piston inside the cylinder, which I'd mentioned that I changed the O-ring on recently. But actually, the leak's coming from the AN fitting around the top here. There's the fluid, and there it is leaking around there. So uh, I'm kind of glad I did that because these are not super cheap. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dismantle this, uh, put some new uh, sealant on it and, and tighten it down again. It may just need another turn. I'm going to have to mark this because it's a hard line, so it definitely only goes in one spot. And hopefully we'll be able to prevent this leak from occurring without having to change the cylinder. Okay, we've got our RA825 Ratco brake uh, anvil here so that we can remove the brake pads from uh, the, the old uh, pressure and backing plates and then install our new ones. So we've got uh, two parts that come with this. Uh, this one's for removing the old rivets, this one's for setting the new ones. So we'll go ahead and set the, uh, the old one in there and then it uh, is quite a simple job to just push out the rivets. Once we've got the old pads removed, we're going to want to go ahead and, and clean up the uh, backing plate and pressure plate and make sure that they're uh, nice and clean. I quite often like to take the opportunity to, to paint them while they're off, um, but I'm kind of really thinking I'd like to go for a fly today, so I might just go ahead and, and get these installed. Um, but we do need to make sure that when we put the new pad onto the plate that they are smooth. Uh, we don't have any raised rust, corrosion, debris, and quite often you can actually get damage if these haven't been done properly with this tool or if they've been done carelessly. You can get damage around the rivet holes and they'll be raised. Now, if you try and set new rivets on, on something like that, you can crack the pads and you won't get a nice flat flush sitting pad onto the plate and you'll damage them. So quite often, if they have been damaged, these ones are in excellent condition, other than a bit of dirt. But if they have been damaged, quite often, uh, just a, you know using a, an anvil or a heavy piece of uh, uh, of metal and and a good blow from a ball peen can often uh, set those back down. And then you can dress them off with a, a, a file or something like that. Um, sometimes you need to sort of wire wheel these and give them a really good clean up. These ones, as I said, are, are not too bad. They're actually, actually, they're very good. Okay, those are looking very nice. Now, we need to now place this part in our anvil. Take our new pad. These are Rapco pads and we've got the nice wear indicators on them here so that we can see if they're visible, how much life once you get to the end, there's, uh, they need to be replaced. We'll take our little rivets and pop them through the pad and then through the backing plate. To do that with both of them and without dropping them on the floor, fit them in. Just keeping my finger to stop the other one holding them down. I've got that really nice 
flat surface there, nothing going to cause issues. Get it squared up. And set the rivet. Again, these are really nice holes, so there's no play in the holes. That can be a problem. Um, and if that is the case, you really do need to replace them. And there we have it. Nice new pad that hasn't been contaminated with hydraulic fluid to go along with our nice new rotors. We'll do the same to the other one. Then it's time to fit everything back on the airplane and bleed the brakes. It will also be a requirement to complete break-in procedure to set the new pads to the brake. RAPCO has a nice publication for that that explains how to do it all, but that's an important part of finishing up the job. So we'll go ahead and install our slave cylinder back on. Don't forget to put your pressure plate with the new pad on prior to installation. Um, quite a lot of airplanes are not going to be as tricky as the Acro Duster to get this back on, but things are very constricted here with the fairings um, and the hard line. So it's, it, it's a little finicky. It's not the end of the world. Forget to hold the fitting there before you tighten it so that we don't put unwanted strain into the casting and crack it. Leading the brake next. This part is a little easier with two people, which we don't have today. So the master cylinder inside the aircraft, I've taken the vent cap out of that, and I've packed lots of uh, rags to catch our excess fluid. Got a number of different pressure systems we can do it. We're gonna bleed it from the bottom up for these applications. Uh, again, consult maintenance manual. Some of the pipers have a pressure up system as well as a gravity down uh, system and uh, the Piper system definitely a little more finicky. Right here we've just got a uh, pressure bleeder that I use. It's just a converted uh, or repurposed garden sprayer uh, with some appropriate plumbing on it to fit the application. It works very nicely for small systems and, and controlling things. So I'm going to go ahead and get that bled back up. Okay, we can see that we've got some hydraulic fluid that's come out of there now. And I can just see the level in the top of the of the master. And that brake feels really nice and firm. I can verify that with the one on the other side. And they feel the same. So that's excellent. So we'll go ahead, remove our rags, clean up everything else, put our vent cap back in. And that looks like we're done in here. Okay, so we've successfully bled the brake now. We've got the bleeder closed, so we can go ahead and remove our bleeder line there. Uh, for all of our aircraft, all of our aircraft uh, in general aviation, you want to look up and see what specification of fluid you're supposed to be using. Most general aviation aircraft you can use 5606 mineral fluid, but, but do check. Uh, but certainly you shouldn't be using automotive style brake fluid in the aircraft. You want to clean up everything now really thoroughly. Good spray down with the brake clean so that if we uh, do have any leaks, we can see them right away and they're evident and we're not going, hmm, is that uh, a, a leak or is that residue or leftovers from when we were doing all of our work? And we'll not forget to put our vent cap back in the uh, master cylinder as well. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Uh, it's certainly excellent to get the airplane all back and ready to fly. We might even try and get out before the day's over. I'll put a link below for the RAPCO instructions for how to do the break-in procedure for your aircraft so that you can review that and uh, otherwise looks like we're good to go. Stay safe, happy tailwinds, we'll talk to you all soon.